You're watching Cartel TV, I'm Jenny. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification button. So here it is, the all new Mazda BT50. As Utes are becoming more of a status symbol in the past few years, the less famous ex-sibling of the Ford Ranger had a lot to do to stay relevant. Yes, there is such thing as an ex-sibling. The latest BT50 is now related more to the D-Max than the Ranger. Mazda made us pretty happy with their new vehicles in the past few years, so we were hoping the BT50 would follow. Make sure you check out my full review of the D-Max. If you are looking into the BT50, as it will tell you a lot about the driving features, you can do it by the card above or following a link in our bio. Anyway, the BT50 I have here is the XT, which is the entry-level trim, so it doesn't have all the perks, but it's still a good offering in the dual cab. Let's have a closer look and I'll tell you all about it. Often when I review utes and I need to talk about their design, there's not a lot to say. They all look very similar in general. And the only thing that I can point out are some peculiarities, like something special about the headlight design or details of the front fascia. Pretty much all of them are just boxes on wheels that have to have. A chunky bonnet up front, usually two rows of seats in a square cabin, and a load bed in the back, which is pretty much like a rectangular bathtub. There you go. Those are the defining characteristics of a ute. And they also stand for the BT50. However, as the industry progresses, utes have to look more classy nowadays. In many cases, the designers have to make them look rugged and attractive, and it's not that easy. The BT50 went the easy way. Mazda's modern designs for cars and SUVs are absolutely stunning, definitely among the best on the market. The new Mazda 6 is definitely a stunner, and the same features are carried over to a number of models, including SUVs. Some of them carry them with more success, some with less, but they all look nice. So Mazda decided to slap the same design direction on BT50. The rugged ute now has the grill and headlight combo, which is unmistakably Mazda. I love the combo usually, but I'm really not sure about it on this ute. What do you think? Does the normally attractive Mazda front look good on a ute? The rest of it is, well, Utish, while the front steals from the other Mazda models. The rear taillights don't take on the same design aesthetic as most modern Mazdas. Of the practical on the exterior front, you should know the longest width of the cargo space is 1530 millimeters, while the shortest is 1120 millimeters. Understandably, between the rear wheel arches, the length is 1570 millimeters. The engine is a 3-litre turbo diesel, and being based on the D-Max, it's the only option in the new BT50. It produces 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters of torque from 1,600 to 2,600 revs. And Mazda wanted me to dust off my old manual driving skills, so they sent us a six-speed manual. There is an automatic option, of course, and it's a six-speed automatic, but I have the old kind. Just like the D-Max, the engine has plenty of torques from very low revs. Yes, I did say the top torque starts from 1600 revs. And while that's nice, it's also not really groundbreaking nowadays. However, rev the engine just above the idle speed to 1000 RPM, go to 1400 RPM, and you have 400 newton meters. More than you need in most cases. What this means is that it's really effortless to drive. You never feel like the engine is struggling. Cruising can be done at really low revs and having a proper manual. I tried it to see how well it fares on a flat road at a thousand revs. No problem, not even a hiccup. It can actually pull from such low revs. However, don't mistake this for any kind of a performance engine. Such pulling power from low revs may make people think the engine will turn into a beast when you go up high. It won't. It does get zippier as you pass 3000 revs, but that's about it. Honestly, that's for the better. You get a reasonably fast vehicle that can pull significant weight from low revs and cruise effortlessly at any legal speed. Just what a good ute should do. Of course, there are two high, four high, and four low options, and a rear locking differential as standard on 4x4 models. The braked and unbraked towing capacity stand at 3,500 kilograms and 750 kilograms, respectively. In terms of drive, the steering and suspension are the same as in the D-Max, so therefore the BT50 is a lot more comfortable than before. Adding some weight in the back improves that further, but even without it, it's a relatively comfortable ride. Steering is also a lot lighter at city speeds, but gets progressively heavier as you speed up. Keeping up with the rest of the industry, the interior of the BT50 is a lot better than before. While it is based on the D-Max, the interior is definitely very Mazda-like, and that's a great thing. You can see the similarities, but even small things like trim details and air vents redesign make a big difference in the overall feel. 
model. I did love the D-Max interior, but this one is even more simplistic and elegant. Depending on the trim level, you get different perks and materials on the inside, but even the XT is very nice. The higher trims get awesome soft touch materials and a larger 9-inch screen. This one is 7 inches and does feature Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which can both be wirelessly connected as well. But I did find that the wireless connection can drop out now and then, so it is better to use the cable. The seats are also nice and supportive and you never have the feeling this is a workhorse. You can actually travel in comfort in one of these. When it comes to the interior spaciousness, quality and feel. Speaking of space, I have to say that the rear seats are really good too. There's ample headroom, legroom is great, and there's even a USB charging port here. The two side seats in the back have ISO fixed points for children who will have more space than they will need. The rear functionality is limited by the body style, as is common with all utes, but overall the cabin of the BT50 is one fine space, and especially so for a ute. In terms of safety, the new BT50 is a lot better than before. Just some of the features in this trim level include AEB ABS, automatic high beam, heaps of airbags, attention assist, blind spot monitoring, child-proof rear door locks, dynamic stability control, EBD, brake assist, emergency lane keeping, forward collision warning, hill start assist, hill descent control, lane departure prevention, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, parking sensors, and a lot more. So is the BT50 simply a copy of the D-Max? Well, in terms of drive and off-road ability, yes. And that's actually a good thing because the D-Max is a great ute. However, in terms of exterior and interior, it brings a new line that makes utes far more elegant. It really does look and feel like a Mazda. For buyers who are not that interested in design, the BT50 brings more trim options and pricing options, and that's always a good thing. Pricing starts at 49,700. So is there room for the BT50? Well, if there was room for the one based on the Ranger, then there's definitely room for the one based on the D-Max. Add to this Mazda's neat styling, and I think the BT50 has found its place. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. So what do you think of the BT50? Would you pick it over the D-Max? Or do you think that Mazda needs to come up with their own engine and stop mooching? Leave your comments below and we'll see you next time. Peace.